Big technology stocks are starting to come in a little short, and it's leading into some problems across the board for markets. The Nasdaq in particular closing in on a tweezer and potentially starting to look a little weak ahead of big earnings coming in over the next two weeks. But what might be most surprising is the dark pool liquidity that was going through over the last 24 hours. And today we'll discuss that along with the capitulation of one of the biggest stocks in the world. What are the stats when Tesla drops over 5% in one day? Yeah, there's a 100% track record, but the results might surprise you which direction. We'll also be talking about US oil, a big breakout here in the oil markets, which we've been discussing for quite a few weeks now, has finally occurred. Where to next for black gold? Let's talk stocks, commodities, and cryptos together right now. Well, welcome back, everybody, to The Daily Show, where we talk about markets around the world, including the macro, lead indicators, and the hottest charts. We've got some great ones coming up today, so remember to subscribe and smash that like button if you love markets like we do in the future. Let's get started by discussing Tesla, negative 12%, one of the worst sessions we've seen in quite some time, and it brings us to some interesting stats. Now, what are these stats, you might ask? Well, it's to do with negative 5% gap down days. When we see a move like this, what has happened in the past when we've been hitting six month lows? Well, as it turns out, there's a 100% track record with the reads back into history. And we usually see the markets return positively over 30 days to a median return of 18%. Now, why is this important? Well, of course, this time could be different. And I think for investors and for traders out there, you're going to be looking for key levels. We've got those coming up in today's session, but specifically for investors, if it doesn't rebound, could there be something a little bit more sinister on the horizon for this stock? Could it really mean that it's coming out of growth phase and it starts to get compressed? What do you think in the comments down below? Let us know about Tesla. Is it done or is this just a pickup as an opportunity moving forward? Let's now talk markets because of course they continue to slowly move up although the NASDAQ has some big levels on it that we'll look at later on today. And these are the percentage of stocks above 5 SMA, 20 SMA, and of course the 50. You can see the 50 breadth is still kind of declining across the board, and the 20 hit one of our key levels being the 25% of stocks uh, the other day. So really, it's kind of like a market that is slowly going up, but it's really just doing so on a couple of stocks, not necessarily the entirety of the market is rallying. And we can see that because, of course, the Russell 2000 in particular has been underperforming in recent weeks. Now let's talk the rest of the year because, of course, we need to have a couple of different outlooks. We've already discussed in this channel heaps of times the idea that Q1 is going to be up, down, and all around with possible volatility coming in before March. Then April comes, which tends to be a very strong month. And this is, of course, the toy two-month created by Wayne and Overall, it comes in at a very strong year, being 35 and 2 in terms of bullish behavior. And it's a pretty good read for what usually does happen. So, with sellers or bears out there, what are we looking for in particular in terms of a sell? Well, we are looking for the CTAs, and this is going to be a big deal. We already know they're super overbought. Goldman Sachs has been reporting on that. And as I said, we would update you as we see changes. Now, we've got the first little down tick here of the CTAs but it's still, I would say, relatively speaking, fairly strong. So we're looking for this to turn to the downside. And if it does, then we'll know that something a little bit more sinister is on the horizon. We've already been talking about home builders, which we've got coming up later on today's show. If we see something like the CTA is dropping and we see home builders dropping, then we could be looking at mean reversion very, very soon. Do we have those yet? The answer is not really. So of course, we're still looking for those catalysts and therefore the market is still up until proven otherwise but we've got the big levels coming up later on today. Now, everyone's been talking about China in the news over the last, I guess you would say, few sessions, and that's because that people are starting to get a little bit excited and their markets are picking it up. Now, we've, of course, been back to last week when we discussed a lot of these things, but have a look here at the amount of calls that have been opened on the Chinese stocks. Now, this is not unusual. It has happened before. Of course, we saw it back last year, and a lot of the time it hasn't really worked out for people trading those markets when we see such a huge amount of calls. But the reason people are doing it is because of this. We've got a massive difference between market values. US stocks absolutely flying off the back of AI and Chinese stocks not doing so well. I tend to believe that actually you'll get a lot of advancements over here in AI as well. 
and therefore profitability out of these companies, even if on a global scale, some of them are dropping off a little bit. And that's because, remember, a lot of these stocks are actually down 70 to 90% right now. I do think it's a bit of a sleeper market from that perspective, but of course, there are geopolitical concerns and all sorts of things going into this. Now, some other things we've talked about from a market perspective has also been negative GDP and whether that means the market could grow. Well, it has in the past when things like this have actually happened, and we've already started to see stimulus into the Chinese New Year, which is what I expect, and of course, this is usually a pretty common thing. But what it's leading into is different trades. You don't have to necessarily look at China itself. What about looking at iron ore? What about looking at copper? These are things that are back on the charts as of a lot of this stimulation the other day that's leading into some nice little rebounds across some of those markets. We've also talked about the idea that we had capitulation. Basically, we just saw the Hang Seng after a 52-week low with zero advancing stocks. Now, you want to see a negative sign? That looks really bad. But as you can see, the stats leading in on after six months and 12 months later are actually very favorable for these types of markets because this type of oversell generally is lining up with capitulation. So what about the stock market making you high? A lot of people are talking about it as a possible negative or the markets aren't going to do well over the next couple of years or we're going into recession or any of those types of things. The thing about a new high is that they do tend to happen in clusters. That is that when you make a new high, there tends to be actually a few more bullish years afterwards. And that kind of is backed up by the overall stats. So a lot of what I think bears will be looking for this year has to do with mean reversion. And that's because it's an election year. While we have seen crashes in election years, we've never seen a recession in an election year. That's an interesting stat right there. We also know the S&P 500 after the first five days, which was a negative stat this year, tends to lead into the first couple of months being up, down, and all around. And at this stage, we've seen down, we've seen up, and of course, we're possibly loading into 5K, but we will be looking again at the NASDAQ later on because that one's got a tweezer on it. And it's been a while since we've seen a rejection like that uh, happening on a major market. S&P 500 electional season patterns, here's what tends to happen. And here's just kind of a read of a normal February market performance in terms of how the markets generally trade. Uh, the reason I bring the February one up is because a lot of people are looking for the sell mid-Feb into the March period. That tends to be one of the more consistent ones that goes through. So just keep these things in the back of your mind. We'll bring some more stats in as we head through January and into, of course, the February period. Now, what is the major concern? What's probably going to be the catalyst for a big sell-off in markets? A lot of it could do with probably open puts, and those are sold puts because it turns out there are lots of new exchange-traded funds coming on the market that are all to do with credit spreads and credit creation. That was one of the best strategies of 23, a really great strategy in 22, and it just I find it funny that all of a sudden everybody's interested in credit selling. Now, don't get me wrong. I love credit selling. It's been one of my most consistent things I've done over the last 10 years. I love it very much. And there's been some amazing returns over some of those periods. Specifically, 2020 had some absolutely bonkers credit. But everybody's getting on that board right now. And you can see here with the puts, we just made a new all-time high here from the last couple of years. So this is something that we should be starting to get a little bit concerned about because what you what you might notice is when did it happen in 2023 and what happened after that was a sell-off obviously into October. So these puts, they're starting to look a little bit shaky. Most of them are open towards the credit side. So that means that they are vulnerable to a flash crash. And you've got to keep that in the back of your mind. I would say it's probably one of the biggest catalysts right now in the markets, if not the biggest what do you think in the comments down below? Give me your catalyst for what possibly could sell this market over the next couple of months. Let's talk options right now. And we already know 4,900 is a big level. We also know that this kind of 4,860, 4,880 zone is going to main be two minor supports in the markets. There wasn't much to get through on the zero DTEs over the session, but we know that if we break through 4,900, that's a huge point, really exposing 4,950 and 5K which are the next major call kind of levels in this positive gamma situation we find ourselves in in the current market. So is there any sign that things are going down yet? Not from that option side of the world. 
In terms of earnings, American Express is the main one coming up, and you can see it's got a plus minus 5 to 6% move. So remember, there will still be volatility on that market. So let's move over now to dark pool activity and what's going on in the markets. And straight away, you'll notice here that we've got the S&P 500 growth ETF up. The reason why is because we've seen a couple of trades over the last years that have been pretty big. This is the biggest we've ever had on this particular market over that time. But the last one happened actually in the period of July. Now, these tend to be a bit of a proxy for things like Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, and NVIDIA and all of those MAG7 stocks. And it's not the only one we've seen. We've also got one here for the Magnificent 7 ETF, a huge trade coming through. Now, off the back of two tweezers, this could be something that we're looking at because, of course, if this is going to sell off, you're usually going to see a sell. You're going to see big tech earnings be the catalyst and the price action will come with it. Have we seen the price action yet weaken enough? The answer is quite simply no, but we will come up with some key levels moving forward in today's show. Another one that's interesting is treasuries, another large trade coming through. And we've already speculated this is the first entry point for a lot of swing traders around this zone, which we've talked about quite a few times, the 93 on treasuries. Let's move over to options. We had a big day again, 42 million, 57% calls and 31% retail single side legs. So pretty big day across the board. And the big trades were coming through, of course, on things like Tesla, 2.15 times the 90 day average, and that's negative 12.1%. In terms of the major stock markets, you can see here that were fairly well even. We had a little bit more puts on things like the S&P 500, and we had some nice big trades on things like IBM as well, trading at 13.32 times the average 90-day volume with a pretty good return there thanks to AI. So it was a good day there, but let's have a look now around what's happening in the markets. First up, our central bank liquidity is showing that there's still a little bit of loosening coming through. And it turns out over the last 24 hours or the last couple of days, the Federal Reserve has started to get rid of a little bit of arbitrage that's been in the markets for a while to do with one of their lending standards. So it looks like they are starting to move towards that whole rate cut situation and they're trying to get the get the banks off the drip feed, you would have to say. Let's move over to the US 10-year. That's at 4.2 and then it dropped off to 4.11. No real concerns about this getting carried away until it gets through 4.3. And of course, it is mean reverted for now, which is exactly what we thought it would do. It just didn't really affect the market as much as some people were hoping for. Let's talk about treasuries. They're sitting at about $93.92. This is still in that support line. Have we broken up above 95 yet? No, uh, which is going to be probably a catalyst to show that this market is ready to move more towards the bullish end, but it is accumulating in a nice zone. So certainly a, a key level for it. If we move over to the bonds indicators, they basically are saying everything looks okay at this stage, so no warnings there. And I'm bringing copper on. Dr. Copper's coming back. And one of the reasons we're bringing it on here to talk about it is because if it gets through this four level, which we've discussed many times, it's going to be a pretty good catalyst for quite a lot of metals. And in particular, you're going to see iron ore breaking through highs. You're going to see copper. And you're going to see a lot of those stocks start to really perform. And remember... A lot of commodity stocks have been underperforming the S&P for a while. So this is a big deal. And it's all coming off, of course, that China stimulus. We saw that start getting announced. And then all of a sudden, we started to see movements there. When we move over to Dow Jones Transportation Average, it held firm over the last 24 hours. New volume high, which is interesting for it. So a lot of trade going in through this. And home builders recovered a little bit, but still looks kind of dodgy on a chart. This still looks like it could be a distribution that we don't have that exact catalyst for it yet. But if this starts to drop under this level here and we've got tweezer on the NASDAQ and we have it then falling below lows that we'll look at later on, that's not going to be good. And of course, that with CTAs as well could be a big negative on markets. What about the US dollar? The US dollar is jumping up. And of course, we've had a target on it for 103.80 to 104 for a little while. Still holding its own, nice wicks on the low. Looks like it's going to try to strengthen up, which could suggest that maybe yields will jump a little bit higher first. We'll have to find out about that one. What about gold? 2015, it's held for now. So that's, of course, where we're seeing those kind of buyers recommit. I'm not super, bull even though I like 2015, I would have rather it just went up and then down to it and then rallied up. We already know 2034 is a massive trade zone. 
You can see the way it's rejected off it before. If you're feeling bullish against gold, you just want it to break through that so bad. And if that happens, it could be a really good time for gold over the next couple of sessions from that point. GDX, another one that actually gapped up in terms of a small island reversal. Then it sold off massively from the 20 moving average. So we know that's a big level there. 29 will be a key. And I guess we kind of remain cautiously optimistic on something like this at these prices. That's for gold stock ETFs. Now let's talk about capitulation. This one was brutal. And for a lot of people, I'm sure it didn't come as much of a surprise as the trend was pretty negative. And of course, yeah, we're seeing this stock having to represent it needs the growth. And if it doesn't get it, then of course, that's going to be a problem. Now we do have some catalysts such as the Model 2 that could turn it around in public perception's eyes and get it back on track. But you notice here that the 194, let's see how it interacted. Now we're back at the most traded zone through the rally, which I think is an important level. But ultimately, you know, the big levels here are back in these 164, 165 zones. And I think credit sellers in particular will be very interested at some of these points. Now, did we see any rally? The answer is quite simply no. If we had and the market had rallied back through, I would have said, well, that's going to be a pretty positive level. And we're probably seeing a stop loss hunt, some kind of thing that's going through this low and we're getting that rally through. Instead, the market just came down to the first level of kind of semi-major support, which is the most traded zone, a little bit of structure on the left-hand side. And if it keeps falling through for the next sessions and really gets dumped into capitulation, I think we all know where the buyers would be committed. But this stock, still very negative. First signs of a key level, sure, but uh, not enough yet in terms of structure to do anything with. So it just shows you why you've got to be careful around earnings season because these types of moves can occur. 12% is no joke. After hours, it's up 07 But yeah, structure here would be very, very nice to see. And for this perspective on Tesla, it's not at an extreme low just yet, which would be around those 164, 165 zones. Let's talk about some improvements here. So this is, of course, Tencent, which is just, again, on that Chinese kind of stock signals. But what we're tending to see here is we have a market that's obviously looking like it's channeling down. So it's been doing that for a little while now. And if we get a breach out, that's going to be a fairly big deal. Stocks such as Barber gave us island reversals towards the positive side. And there have been quite a lot of nice little pickups here across many of these stocks and markets. But what I'll notice is that Tencent is not on a new low or near a new low such as others, which is showing you that this stock overall has more elastic demand than the others. And that's kind of going with the idea that maybe it's one of the strongest stocks should we end up seeing a rally through all of those. Speaking about the whole stimulus thing, because of course central bank stimulus is a big deal for markets, we're seeing stocks such as BHP, Rio, Vale, and many iron ore stocks, and of course copper stocks give huge reversals. And this is symptomatic of what we generally do see around these types of announcements. And it just shows you there are different ways to trade it. You can also do a commodities-based thing. And obviously, if copper breaks through that key level, I could see that being very positive for a lot of these stocks. Hang Seng Index, big rally, obviously first level of take profit targeting being reached around 16.4. I kind of expect a little bit of weakness here and then I'd like to see strength into things like a 17.2 level for the Hang Seng. Still huge volumes. You can see that they're a little bit more unusual and trade is certainly still coming in on this particular market. Expect it to be one of those ones that kind of hovers and ideally then continues to rally up. Aussie market, not too bad for the Australians out there, obviously looking towards a new all-time high. And if we do get above this level up here, which is that 76 kind of 51, that would be a momentum shift for this market. So certainly looking for that. It does look a little bit more positive. It's going to love copper to move up as well. This market is basically three things, energy, metals, and financials. So will it be bad if we see an increase in oil? No, <laughs> certainly won't be. And of course, it wouldn't be bad if we saw some of those other things. Speaking of oil, let's get onto it and have a look at what was going on because this is finally what happened. So we'll give a clap because if you had the stamina to hold the oil over the last two weeks, which has been watching paint dry, it finally gave you some reward. 2.32% on the spot here, moving up to that 78 target, which we've had for a while. And we think that probably there will be some form of sell around 78, but the next target would be between 80, kind of two to 84 a barrel. 
Now, it's nice to see it break through because, of course, this was a pretty decent technical and it had some great signs. The real catalyst here was above 74 and 70.50 for the early adopters. So these kind of areas were both key. Good, good, very nice, liked it. Thank goodness it's through. So there you go. It takes a while sometimes, but again, you're playing with what is your high probability replicable trade. This particular one is something that I have in our day trading masterclass. There's a couple, there's of course some secrets and tips for it, but there are a few things that look quite nice there and it's good to see it come through. Let's now move over to the US 2K. So US 2K, two rejection wicks, and you can see here that uh, it's come down. Then it hasn't quite gotten low enough to get, I would say, a conservative buy-in, and then it's pressured back up. Now, has it broken through this high? No. Is that a big catalyst? I'd say so. So I'm going to set an alert here at 2005, just in case the Russell 2000 is able to do it. Maybe no trade on it just yet from my perspective. If you're already long, you're probably just hoping that break does happen. Uh, but yeah, I would like to see something like this that would be much cooler, I think, from a uh, replication standpoint. Let's now talk about Qs because you can see here that there's a couple of little nasty signs. And what those are is that we get rallies in the morning followed by sells in the afternoon. And you really represent those by these red candles. Now, it's not great to have so many red candles. If you look at like kind of these old previous rallies, any rally really, you don't see too many of these things really occurring unless it's like a bit of a pullback. And when they're happening at the exact same zone, that's when you need to start being a little bit cautious because they're not ideal signs of market strength. I mean, if you're rallying in the morning and selling by the close, who's really selling? Generally, it's the bigger players. So that's something that we are keeping in the back of our mind. Then, of course, you've got the futures contracts, which are showing more of a, as you can see here, more of a tweezer style setup. And if we go to the two hour, you can see here that we've got some key levels we need to look at. So first up, we're going to set some alerts at 17,280. Now, if that happens, the reason we're going to set those types of things is that would be for a lot of day traders and swing traders, a bit of a change of trend. It would finally stop the higher highs and the higher lows and end up creating a bit of a lower low. Now, that would be certainly, I think, a catalyst, and it would probably come off the back of some kind of bad earnings. And remember, earnings season is on right now, so make sure to subscribe to the channel because we'll be covering all of the major earnings, all of the options, expected moves as they happen, and, of course, earnings beats and misses is coming in next week as well. First weird sign, also 20 moving average here on the two-hour did get closed below. It's not looking great for the NASDAQ. Of course, we do get a high. We break off these highs and don't reject. Look, get ready for another big squeeze. But certainly the NASDAQ's looking worse than the US 500. Now, could the NASDAQ sit and the US 500 go up? The answer is actually yes. And the reason is because breadth has been so poor through this rally that we're starting to see an improvement in breadth as other stocks come through with the goods as well. Now, is the S&P 500 as bad? as the NASDAQ? The answer is quite simply no. Does it have a big rejection week? Yeah. And a lot of people have been actually asking the question, well, look at that rejection week. How can you not be negative on that? And I answer it with the same thing I always do. Look at the previous history. So if you see these rejection weeks, has that necessarily instantly led into a sell? The answer is unfortunately no. And you'll find that it's more of a 50-50 throughout history. Remember, a shooting star or pin bar, as many people call them, is no good unless it's at a level that is confluence with other big resistances. And 4,900 is only a call resistance. We don't have much else. Still setting alerts at 48.50 for, again, very similar to the NASDAQ, a turning point for these markets. But at this stage, they're still melting up and there's nothing uh, really that's changed there. Now let's move over to Bitcoin. Of course, the Wyckoff concept here, which is that we're getting weakness and then rallies are being met by ideally sell demand, 36.8, 34.4, and 28 being the key levels that we could see buyers rejoining this particular market at. It's been pretty bad sales since the Bitcoin ETF, obviously down. I think it's close to 20%. Let's have a look here. Yeah, over 20%. So there you go. So big sales that have happened across this. Now, the positive signs are that there could be a buyer somewhere around that 39.3. And if we do see a big wick off that, we could go just underneath 42 and see sellers. Or we could go all the way to 43 and see sellers. I still think this is where the big bears sit at this stage. So if we do see rallies over the weekend trade or Friday trade, uh, these are levels that I would be 
you know, looking at very closely from a day trading and scalping perspective. For the big news ahead, what have we got? We've got core PCE price index coming through. And do remember to always be vigilant on your charts because there's so much stuff going on. In my opinion, one of the biggest things I think we're all seeing together right now is going to be earnings. And with Intel giving bad future forecasts for Tesla saying it's going to be a little bit muddy, that's really where the market's going to be looking at. Big tech, what is the future forecast? Is it strong? Is it weak? Especially about AI. It's all coming up. It's going to be a volatile couple of weeks coming up, guys. Make sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.